uh, uh, a quickie we've got what we've done is we've put our motor in this is a, a, a low power motor about 500 watts I would have said okay so we're talking about a motor which is um, you know like a, a twentieth somewhere between fifteenth and a twentieth of the power of the milk pot motor but it doesn't matter and uh, we've got a real poor um, uh, circuit to uh, uh, okay so that's the switch off technology it's a resistor 1k <laughs> and uh, you know basically it's discrete this is to drive the gate that's obviously the component that's doing the uh, control uh, the motor itself is you know, it's, I wouldn't even say lukewarm it's just not cold okay what we got in the power pack probably nothing because we're actually not used oh it's a little bit warm you know and um, what we've done is we set a uh, if you can adjust it 10% mark you see and the cycle count that's that's effectively the PWM frequency so 100 Hertz and we got a 10% mark space ratio on that okay I'm not quite sure what this guy's doing that's uh, showing our mark space ratio there you can see that yeah I don't know it's inverted isn't it anyway whatever that's the gate it's taking the uh, no it's not actually oh it's on the output <laughs> yeah, I've <obviously>, seen. <laughs> I've put it on the output to see what the output's doing, and uh, for some reason it's inverted. Oh, it's because it's uh, negative going. Yes, so the, the pulses are negative going, right? So it's actually minus. Uh, the voltage is negative, so it's showing a mark space ratio where it's pulsing negative going, because this is a split rail supply, and this motor is running on the on the negative rail. Okay. Yeah, I should have put it on the gate, you know, which is uh, uh, which is that? That's this one, isn't it? Yeah. So what we're going to do is see if we can do it. That killing something, of course. Ooh. There we go. So we're putting it onto the gate instead, so we can see what the gate's doing. And there we go, chickens. Okay, let's get that down. So we can see the gates. Okay, let's have a a good input. So that's the switch off time. Switch on time is going to be pretty fast. We're not worried about that. It's the switch off time that's the problem. And what we're seeing there is something. Uh, right. Well, let's try and let's just try and measure it. Uh, it's a rough measurement, obviously. Oops. And let's get in there. So I would say that the edge of it is about there. So. That's 40, 40 microseconds, basically. Yep. And that's a really poor uh, estimation. Let's see if we can get a better one. Uh, so if we move the wire across so we can see it. Oh, which way is it? It's pushing it that way, isn't it? There we go. Is it on the actual scale? I don't think it is, is it? Okay, there we go. So that's a little bit better. Yeah. Oops. We can... Yeah, that's as good as we're going to get, I think. So if we can bring this across and measure it a bit better. There we go. And we've got a little bit of overshoot on there. It's, it's not going to be good because it's just a resistor that's shutting off the gate. Gives us an idea of how much current the uh, gate needs to actually shut off properly. Yeah. A sort of discharge, so that's a little. So we'll measure it from the peak down. Let's say, yeah, 50 microseconds, which is uh, not going to work if we're going to have high power, but it'll do on this one because this is only a small one. And we've got uh, basically, I've got a temperature sensor on the uh, on the IGBT itself, just to see what sort of temperature it gets up to. Now I believe. <coughs> Usually, when I uh, I measure open air temperature, it's somewhere in the region of 10 to 15 degrees. So ambient is say 10 to 15 degrees, and we're reading about 30 on the controller. And what we've done is put 10% 10, 10 mark space ratio on it, just so that we can uh, get a, a comparatively worst case scenario. I was trying to tweak it to try and find the worst case scenario to see what it would go up to, and it seems that about 10% mark spaces gives it the worst case scenario in terms of 
the uh, controller. As soon as you turn it to higher powers, the uh, back EMF in the motor rises so that the, uh, the controller isn't handling as much transition. <coughs> yeah, and uh, I guess at lower powers, it's basically not, uh, the, the field isn't building up in the motor so the transition is still not that great so it looks like somewhere around the 10% mark is is good for this. We've got a nice low frequency of 100 Hz and deliberately, and obviously you can hear it, it's 100 Hz because um, it's a frequency that people know about in terms of power. You listen to an amplifier, right, which is a bit of a poo one or you stick your finger on it or something you tend to hear around about that frequency, don't you? So you associate it in a sort of subliminal way with power so that's why we're happy with it being 100 Hz. There's also 50 Hz, because it means it's 50 Hz, and this could do 50 Hz instead. But it's more of a, a kind of an associative thing, so you're associating it with power. Now, as you increase the uh, mark space ratio, So that's decreased it now, and you can hear it's gone quite quiet now. And then you can. There we go. And it's gone quieter again. And that's at 99%. So that's obviously a full. And the temperature will drop now. I know from experience, in fact, you can see it's dropping already, you see. Go up again, then go on. Call me a liar. But it will drop. That'll probably drop to about sort of 24 degrees, I think I had it on when I was testing it out. Okay, so that's the uh, that's kind of uh, the you know the maximum temperature is going to be 30 deg 32 degrees. So if I actually change that, oops, hold on, I'm altering the mark on its own. I don't want to. Hmm. Don't mess with it now. <laughs> Just using what it is is out of in, inbuilt into the uh, set into this because these controls are bust because the ADCs are blown. I'm just doing it via the keyboard, changing it there. But in reality, you'd use that and change the mark space ratio with that. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, yeah, that's uh, sixty-two percent. Yeah. And I thought, in actual fact, I thought that the worst case scenario would be when it's kind of just just about to turn. I would have thought that would be the worst case scenario because then you're basically you're building up the field in the coil uh, and you're giving it the most amount of power but of course because the, mo the rotor isn't turning then your field, you're not getting any back EMF so you're getting the maximum amount of field before it starts delivering back EMF but that's actually not the case. I think what it probably is is that the field itself has to build up and, and, and uh, it has, you have to bu build the field up um, and that takes a measurable time, you see, and the 3% uh, mark, okay, so if we're at 100 hertz, then that's going to be about, uh, 100 hertz is uh, one cycle every What's that? 10, 10 micro, 10 milliseconds, isn't it? So 30 milliseconds isn't isn't enough to build up the field. You see, it needs 100 milliseconds. It seems. No, that's not right. 100 milliseconds and a tenth of a second. I'm out by a factor of. Yeah, I'm out, aren't I? It's. Uh, milliseconds. It's just milliseconds. It? Three milliseconds isn't enough time to build up the field. You need more. You need 10 milliseconds to build it up. Don't you? That sounds about right. Okay, so yes, and you can see the temperature is dropping. Look, you see. So if I actually bring the mark space ratio up, so that the shaft's rotating at ten percent. There we go. That's ten percent. Okay. So we've got shaft rotation, but that's not full speed. So the back EMF will be just low. It won't be full, but probably the field coils in that particular motor will then be building up 
it, in other words, the PWM will actually have an effect on the field because it's only a, a low frequency one, you see. Now, you can obviously go up to a higher frequency on the controller, but then it's chicken and the egg, isn't it? Because if you go up to a higher field, you get them, then get more transitions on your device. So that means you're spending more time in transition because you're at a higher frequency, you see. So it's uh, swings and roundabouts, basically. But I'm going for the low frequency one because that saves that. <laughs> and 10% seems to be the worst case scenario. And you can see the temperature start to rise again now. You see? And uh, yeah, I left that. It was it was going for about an hour, I think, and it didn't get more than. And of course, there is no heat heatsink at all on this. Um, this device seems to have a very efficient uh, thermal coupling between the junction and the uh, plate here, because I was just cooling it down by I had a finger which I put on the motor casing, which was cold at the time, right? And then I just put it onto it so that the the the, the low temperature of my finger. <laughs> was dissipating it, and it, that, that, that dropped it by 5 degrees <laughs> just by putting a cold finger on it <laughs> so it's a very efficient interface so yeah, I'm quite confident that that device is probably going to do the job so, uh, right, so now what I need to do is, you notice this vacant space here what we need to do next is to recreate the electronics that um, can do the logic transition and the uh, gate driving using the newest uh, circuit that I've got which involves MOSFETs in the drivers in, in the logic transition so yeah it's all looking good and once we get that uh, switch off time down then the temperature of the controller will go back down again because at the moment it's you know we're not we're not actually powering anything although when we I mean if I stop the shaft I don't think it will make a difference in the temperature because it's still transitioning the same you see Anyway, that's the next stage. <laughs>